Welcome, my name is Jason Murray and I'm a Solutions Readiness Engineer at Cisco and this video is going to cover the initial configuration of a BE6K server. This will include the setup of ESXi and deploying your first virtual machine. In this demonstration I will be using a stock UCS server that I have and not the actual BE6K server that you will see but the server setup process is basically the same. The real difference what you're going to notice is that you're going to have a lot more software on your server itself than I'm going to have. Because when you get your BE6K server there's some things that are already pre-configured for you such as the RAID the ESXi is already pre-installed and all the software that you're going to need to install any of the UC applications are preloaded onto the data store. So with that said, let's go ahead and configure the BE6K server starting with ESXi. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, the BE6K server that you receive is already going to have ESXi installed on it as well as any of the software that you're going to need to build your virtual machines. However, you're going to first need to configure an IP address so you can reach it to do that configuration. In this demonstration, I'm just going to use a regular UCS server that I already have configured. So some of the things are going to be pre-configured already for you. It may look a little different, but the process of configuration is going to be the same. So using a monitor and keyboard, when you connect, you're going to see this initial screen and you're going to need to hit the F2 key to log on and the default login name is going to be root and the default password is going to be password. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you connect into the system and log in is configure a password because it does have that default password of password. So you want to make it more secure so you're going to have configure password highlighted, hit enter and then you're going to type in the old password which is password and then your new password. I'm not going to do that here because I've already got it set to something else. So the next thing you're going to want to do is arrow down to Configure Management Network and hit Enter. Now this first option, Network Adapters, you do have two NICs in the system. So it's up to you whether you want to just hook up the one NIC to the network or you can actually connect the second one and do like a trunking or a port channeling on the server. And We're not going to go through that setup right now. We just have the one NIC connected so we'll go ahead and just keep this one selected and we'll go into the next configuration which is VLAN. Now VLAN is optional as you can see it says that on the configuration here but if you had a different IP address for your server and you had different ones for the actual applications you may want to set up a trunk and do a different VLAN to set that matches your actual server so in this case I have 64 on here because it's a different network than what my UC apps are but we're gonna keep that the same and probably the the biggest thing that you, everybody's gonna change is the IP configuration which you see here and now default it's gonna have just this first selection selected but you're gonna arrow down to the next selection hits the space bar to select that and then you're gonna arrow down to the IP address subnet mask and default gateway to configure those for your network now this is all gonna be different for everybody else you can see my configuration here but like I said you're gonna change it to whatever makes sense for your network so you can actually reach it in just a moment Okay, I'm going to hit escape here, and then you can make some other changes if you want. I'm not going to, so I'm going to hit escape one more time. And at this point, it's going to ask you if you want to restart the management network, which it didn't mean because I didn't make any changes, but you're going to definitely want to hit yes there. You can arrow down to restart management network. It's going to restart it. You can do it here, but since I didn't make any changes, I don't need to do the restart, but... When you do the initial config, it's going to ask you if you want to restart the management network, and you're going to hit Y to do it. And then once it does, you're going to come back to this main screen. And then if you want to, you can arrow down to Test Management Network, and you can hit Enter here. And what that's going to do is going to ping your gateway, and then you can do some resolve your host name if you have something set. But I'm not going to go ahead and do it because I know that this works. So we're going to hit OK. And that's pretty much it for the configuration of your server. You should be able to connect to it now as long as all the tests work out. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and connect to it with the vSphere client. Okay, so now that I have that configured, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this window. And we're going to open up the vSphere client that I have installed on this with the, using this icon. Now you're going to pull up this 
browser window before I actually connect into it let's go ahead and show you how to install this client because you can go to VMware.com search for it and download it from their site you'll have to have a login for it but the easy way to do it is go ahead and connect in with the web browser to your b 6 k server using that IP address you just configured with VMware or with actual Firefox we'll have to do some security exceptions we'll say okay but once we get into that page you'll be able to click on this download vSphere client li link and get the install file downloaded and then you can install it from there so it's going to install the client so that's a quick and easy way to do it since I already have the client loaded I'm not going to go through the install it's a basic install just hit next so I opened up the link or open up the icon here and we're going to connect into the IP address of the server log in with the password that we set earlier go ahead and install the certificate we'll click ignore and let it continue to log in okay now that I have the vSphere client open and we are connected to our server we're going to go take a look at where you can find all the software. Now this one's going to look a little different. I only have Communications Manager on here because this is a normal UCS server. It's going to look a little different than your BE6K server that's going to have all the software on it. But to go find that software, you can click on Configuration, click on Storage, and then you're going to see a data store. And this is where all your software is going to be. So we can right click on this and click Browse Data Store and now once that's open you're gonna see a listing of all the ISOs and all the templates OVA templates on this particular data store now mine does look different because like I said this is just a demonstration server the process is the same but you're gonna to need to go to this data store in order to deploy your OVA templates because you can't deploy a template from the data store itself so you're gonna to have to actually download that to your desktop or somewhere that's accessible to your PC that you're doing the deployment from so you're gonna select on it and then you're gonna click this little button right here to download it to wherever you need to download it to it's gonna be easier just to download to our desktop so we're gonna click OK just a warning that says you're gonna replace a file if it's got the same name which we don't care it downloads and then we can go ahead and click the X button to close this out and now we can deploy our first virtual machine so we're gonna click file and click deploy OVA template once that opens up a little wizard comes here and then you're gonna click on browse and since we put this on our desktop we're gonna go to the desktop which shows up right here we can double click on it or we can just click on it and then click open once we got that set, then we can come down here and click next. We can look over kind of the details of this particular template for the communications manager version. We hit next. Now you can name it whatever you want to name it. I'm just going to leave it as the default just for this example here. So we're going to click next. Now this part here is what you're going to need to change because this is a B6K example. So you're going to need to down hit the down arrow and click on and select the BE6K configuration which you can tell it has different configurations 80 gigabytes if you were to choose another one you can tell that it's going to create a different disk size different memory selection so with the BE6K it's going to select what it needs so 80 gigabyte hard disk with 4 gig of RAM so this is what we need selected and we're going to click next format is going to be thick provision lazy zeroed uh, you can look up what the, all those mean but that's going to be the default and we're going to keep that as the same now the network mapping is going to look a little different as well because you probably aren't going to have any VLANs already configured now you can do it you can leave it as the default VLAN which is already configured but on this particular demonstration server I have quite a few VLANs as you can see can rated but this is like I said this is just a default or a, a demonstration server so you're not going to have really any configuration here but we'll go take a look at that here in a second at, at where, where you can configure this if you need to change this setting so we're going to leave it at this and we're going to go ahead and uh, click the next button alright so that's done and this is our last screen we're going to hit finish on here 
and now it deploys and as you can tell it does it fairly quickly there's not much that it needs to do so we're going to go ahead and click close and then before we actually look at the virtual machine itself let's take a look at the networking section now this is where I had those VLANs that in that drop down this is where this is configured so if you hit properties you can go in here and actually create virtual machines for your virtual uh, VLANs for your virtual machine you don't need to do that there's a default VM network and as long as they're in the right network it'll work but you may prob you may probably want to create this depending on what VLAN your virtual machines are actually supposed to be a part of you can configure the VLAN ID but we're not going to be concerned about that right now because we're just using this as demonstration but this is where you would actually go to do that so coming back to our virtual machine as you can tell this has already been deployed so with the name that we gave it earlier so what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this virtual machine and click edit settings because we're going to attach an ISO to it so it can boot off it so we can do some install so we're going to click this selection here data store ISO file and we're gonna click browse it's gonna go browse the data store we only have one so this data store right here might be different name than what you see but basically the same should only see one data store and then there you see a folder where our virtual machine is actually created and then we have the ISO so yours may have a ton of them on here since if you have a regular BA6K but since I only have the one for this demonstration we're going to go ahead and click on the ISO for communications manager and select that and then we're going to click OK and then the next thing you're going to want to do is check this box here that's connected at power on so when it boots it'll boot off of that ISO okay so now that we have that checked we have that attached we're going to click OK and then we're going to come over here and right click on the virtual machine and click power power on and then we're gonna select the virtual machine itself and click the console tab so you can see what's going on and as you can tell it's starting to boot so I'll give this a few minutes or a couple seconds you see right now it's booting off the ISO and what you would do now is just go through your normal install of communications manager which we're not going to go through it's just a normal install but this is how you would get your virtual machine up and running and ready to install so once you finish the installation wizard here you're gonna while it's installing you can go ahead and build your other virtual machines using their respective OVA templates off the data store so it's the same process download the template deploy it attach the ISO and start the install so each one's gonna be very similar to communications manager so that actually brings us to the end of this video in the next video in the series I will actually run through the initial setup of the applications of communications manager unity connection and I am in presence for the B6K and then eventually integrate them all using the provision manager so till then thanks for watching and thanks for choosing Cisco